Welcome to the Retrospect Podcast, a show where people come together from different walks of life and discuss a topic from their generation's perspective. My name is Ian, and as always, I'm joined by Stoney. Hello. And Jason. Hello, everyone. And before we introduce our guest, I feel like I'd be remiss if I didn't introduce Miss Miranda on the podcast. <laughs> She's back. back. Like, it's been so long, I feel like, since we've had you on here, and I feel like I, I had to I also introduce you as well. So well, welcome. Thank you. I'm glad to have you back. Um, anyways, uh, Jason, you said you brought a, uh, a uh, yes, today, so. uh, you know, when we started, uh, you know, we brought up this idea of health food and, and health supplements and, yeah. and, and we thought that would kind of be an interesting kind of angle to, to, to tackle. Mm-hmm. Well, we so, had Troy on with some holistic and some right. different type, you know, lively, you know, red light therapy, yeah, uh, oxygen chamber, things like that. And it got into the diet also. The diet also. And that, that's a huge market. So I started thinking, who could I call that would be kind of a kind of an expert that would kind of know this world? Mm-hmm. Um, so I reached out to my friend that we all know, Jennifer Richardson, mm-hmm. and she recommended Lucy, who owns uh, Lucy's health food store hi lucy and so uh jennifer gave me her number i made a phone call we communicated and she was like all in and so i welcome you to our podcast lucy and uh please tell us about yourself well my name is lucy ramos and i own the health food store like you just said lucy's health foods in baton rouge louisiana thank you for the invitation How, how did you get into this business? I mean, what drew you into all this? I started working as a student working at a health store called Living Foods 30 something years ago. I think I know where that might be. At the overpass. Yes. That's where I started. And uh, for some reason, that's one of the things that you see people coming and listen to. I um, just went to the doctor and they cannot find what's wrong with me. I feel this and I feel that. They gave me some medicine that really helped. And kind of gave me like, okay, well, I want to get a, uh, something where I can help people to get better, you know, have a better lifestyle, and I just start doing that. That's awesome. I've just been enjoying it, doing it. Yeah, <laughs> and so you've been, you've been doing it ever since then? Uh-huh. Wow. You said you were a student worker, so... Well, with an LSU... Came to LSU to um, was doing some uh, second language, so okay. I'm still learning. <laughs> Thirty something years, hey. but um, then I start you're working a part time few hours just to practice and everything. And then you do have a very unique accent. Am I? You're from Spain. Spain? Uh, my family is from Spain. Okay. All my family is from okay. Spain. I wow. picked a little bit of that up. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's great. So. So you say you've been, you've now owned Lucy's for how long, you said? Uh, 30, 33 years. 33 now. years. Wow. At the, I assume, at the current location or have you moved? Uh, I started with the overpass and then we moved to another store in Highland Road. Which okay. It was a big store. And then when, you know, all these big, big ones came, you know, Whole Foods. Mm-hmm. Right. All them um, kind of. Moved to in a small location, and then I've been there since. I've been there f- the last location. I've been there for thirteen years, and I was thir- seventeen in the other one before. Wow. Okay. So what exactly? So you 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 said you had you had some health issues, and you were going to the doctor, and the doctor was giving you typical drugs that they prescribed to you, and. Uh, th- that wasn't obviously addressing your needs. So what? I mean, what? How did how did you kind of really dive into this this health food? I know you say you worked as a student worker, but what, what's kind of driving this this um, this hunger to to, to well, learn about supplements and what they can do versus what traditional medicine can't do? Um, the first was the seeing people with the needs to get better and having no results, and I said, well, we we, we know this we can do something to help people to get better. And that's when I start studying, and all my researches start with in like you know major places like 
Baylor University, University of California, Mayo Clinic, PubMed. I don't get just Google because you can find information. Right. They're not, you know, reliable. But, um, and it started starting all this, you know, vitamins, supplements, and different kind of natural medicine that's been effective. I mean, I have a lot of testimonies and people there. Using it. And One of, of the things I like to say on the show, and I've, I've said a number of times in many conversations, is that 50 years ago, bread had three ingredients. It had water, flour, yeast, maybe sometimes a little pinch of salt in there. And now bread is illegal. American bread is illegal outside of the mm-hmm. United States. No bread and anymore. it has 36 to 39 ingredients, and most of them are petroleum-based chemicals to enhance flavor or whatever. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, Being in, in, uh, you know, the health food and holistic, what what do you think about the chemicals that we're doing? Really disappointing. I think a part of the, this war that we live in right now, people live longer, but they live sick. Right. So, Mm -hmm. I mean, you can live until 80, 90, but, I mean, you've been sick since you are probably 40 or 50. Well, I I think they're making us live longer so they can charge us to keep us healthy and not really fix it, but fix the symptoms. And the thing about um, the the way that people, you know, they get so sick is the way they they, they live and the way they eat. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, you go and it's so easy to get something just to heat up and get a dinner. It's just... Heat it up and eat it. And when you really get in the ingredients on it, what are you eating? Preservative, colors, all this stuff like petroleum base. Mm-hmm. Food, there's no really chicken. They don't really have chicken on it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. <laughs> the bread, like you said, is my grandma used to make the bread. And it was like, her open it and it was like water, a little bit of yeast, salt, let it grow, and then put it in an oven. We live in a society where there's artificial lemon flavor in the lemonade, uh, but we also have real lemons in the furniture polish. That makes <laughs> no right. sense to me. <laughs> yes, you know This right. is what they're advertising. Correct. Mm-hmm. Well, so I kind of really want to dive into this a little bit about supplements. What, what I mean... Can you can you shed some light on what are good? There's so many supplements out there, and um, you, it's overwhelming. I mean, I, I go to stores and I, I, you know, I see all kind of things, and so I just kind of get lost in the shuffle when it comes to the supplement market. Can you shed some light on you know about that world? What what you know sure. maybe some recommendations of some good things, things that may not be that beneficial to you or or would be really beneficial to you can you talk about that a little bit sure. and, and and just your expertise in that um well the main thing that you want to do is keep your body healthy of course whatever you're eating is the main thing exercise it will be another one it help but it's the other part where the supplements really play a big role because our body deteriorating constantly because all these radicals and all this. The free, the yeah, same, free, uh, what was that, free radicals, mm-hmm, correct. Destroying our, our cells and all that. So what we can do to help our body to get better. So start taking some, some antioxidants. And the main thing is you can get supplements everywhere. A lot of, you know, pharmacies and big stores and all has vitamin, minerals and everything, but they're all synthetic. I would say if you really want to get something to help your body heal, go for the natural uh, vitamins, go for the natural supplements. So vitamin C from real, real vitamin C. Where do you, wh- okay, so that, that, that well, what, what is real vitamin C? Where do you get like that out? What from, is, well, when it helps with the store, I have everything that I have is what, from what, ascorbic acid or from real oranges, real, you know. Okay. Does your body absorb, recognize like a natural and absorb it? How much vitamin C should we be getting? Normally, I recommend 1,000 a day, but it all depends, you know, what is going on with you. If you have a weak immune system or if you've been sick, I probably recommend it more. But since I'm not a medical doctor, every time they suggest something, I always tell people, 
ask your doctor to make sure it's okay to get that amount and then they go for there. Mm-hmm. This is something that I can take a deep dive on. Yeah. <laughs> um, I used to be the in-house physician expert at a big vitamin company over in Houston. And along along these lines, it, it, when you start doing the deep dive on supplements, you'll find certain things like vitamin C. There used to be literally dozens of vitamin C manufacturers. Now... There's pretty much, there's, I think there's one in one of the Scandinavian countries and everything else is made out of China. So almost all vitamin C, probably 99, 98, 99% comes from China and it's all derived from corn. So if, if you have an allergy to corn and, you know, all corn is GMO now, you're, you know, even if you're buying high quality supplements, it all comes from the same place. So you have to be a very self-educated consumer to buy supplements in this day and age um, because there's only so many manufacturers of the raw materials. And the raw material providers, how do I put this? There are some sneaky people out there. And so when you buy, let's say, you, you know, your raw materials often come either in boxes with the bags in the box or they come in great big, um, great big barrels. And so as a company, as a manufacturer, when you get these barrels in to make your supplements, let's say it's vitamin C powder from, from Europe or from China, you might only, you put in your little, your testing tools to take out a little sample so you can put it on a, you know, a, a spectrometer and see that it does identify as vitamin C. Most companies are only going to test the top of the barrel. And these raw material suppliers know this. So they'll put the crappy products through 70, 80% of the barrel, and they'll just put the good stuff on top. So when people are testing it, oh, it it tests. tests. They're grabbing the top. and There's very few supplement manufacturers that will do QC throughout the whole product. Um, But people don't tell you this. It's, It's like all vitamin E virtually comes from soy. So you'll have even on labels, because when you when you buy a vitamin and it says on the back, it's got that little wheat logo and it says it's, um, you know, celiac approved or wheat free or all this kind of stuff. All those are pay to play symbols. All of those symbols are pay to play. So it doesn't really mean anything. It means that that manufacturer has bought that little designation on their label. So you have to really investigate and start buying your products from companies like a lot of the small manufacturers that are still selling through health food stores or the providers that, you know, sell through doctor's offices um, that are doing the QC and that are avoiding excipients, avoiding fillers, uh, avoiding what I call kitchens, uh, the kitchen sink type of formulas. And most of the things that are sold in the big box stores are kitchen sink formulas. They'll say, oh, it's got this and this and this and this and this in it so that they can say it has it in it. But it never has enough to appreciably do anything. So you can say it's on the label, but it's never enough to do what it's supposed to do. So you have to you have to really do a deep dive to have targeted formulas. Well, then what are some? Uh, and I'm asking kind of as an open statement. What are some of the better companies that you can that someone can reliably, Lucy? I mean, what what are some of the? Well, I'm really picky about getting products at the store and I, I mean they have to be a good quality products and a lot of my customers know that um, I only work with companies they are guaranteed that everything they have is already been tested and clinically researches and everything um, we have a companies like Nature's Plus and been in business for probably over 30 something years or more and Europharma is one of the companies there really has a Euro, lot. What is it? Europharma? Europharma. Europharma. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, I'm seeing people, like, getting better and, like, I mean, you can tell. They come back to the store and say, you gave me my life back. When you listen to that, you go, like, wow. Okay. So, you can really tell. That's the powerful. Help. Mm-hmm. So. So, so, everybody should be taking a multivitamin every day. Yes, the reason uh, they are normally recommended, and I always ask people, did you take a good multi? I said, oh, yeah, I get take one a day. And I said, well, that's not really a good multi. Uh, you need something just 
you know, more like your body can absorb it and you can feel it. And the same thing, we go back to the way that we eat, whatever we put in our body. And if we eat carrots and broccoli and all that, yeah, it's great. But the soil has been so depleted that we don't get in all right. the, sub- yeah. the vitamins and nutrients that we used to have years ago. So we have to help our body to keep healthy just I mean, I, our, our food mm-hmm. supply is in, in bad shape. I, I remember watching a show, and I think I've mentioned it uh, on this podcast before. It was a series put out on the, the Vice Network. It was something to the effect of, you know, we're all going to die, The mm-hmm. you know, blah, 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 <laughs> whatever it was. Yeah. And it had different segments of different aspects of of life. And one of the segments was the food supply Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. how the food supply has been so compromised. Well, what's interesting about that is when you look up, let's say you go on, you know, one of the like my fitness pal apps and you want to see what your macros are, what you're getting in, what your nutrients that you're getting in is if it says your orange has 60 calories and so many grams of carbs and, and let's say 55 uh, milligrams of vitamin C and it, you know, rattle down the list of all the nutrients it has in it. Well, all of those were set back in the early 1940s. And so mm. what we think is in our food, our food no longer tests with those levels. Right. Our, our food is testing about an eighth of the levels. So you still, we're still being held to that standard, even though our, our food is like 16% of what has the nutrient content about 16% of what it used to be. So people think that they're eating better than what they actually are. And it used to be if you went and, you know, we had farm to market. So you would, the farmers would grow things. You would either buy them directly from the farmer or you would buy fresh produce right from, right from the local market. And things were not kept. But now you can go to Whole Foods and you buy your apple and it might have been in cold storage for eight months. Well, we Mm. know once we pick something, all of those nutrients start degrading, even if, they're kept in cold storage. Right. So, and it starts going down dramatically. So you think you're eating better than what you actually are, even if you're spending your entire paycheck at Whole Paycheck. Yeah, I know. I, I spend a lot at, at Whole Foods, you know, and, and for because they just have some things that I can't find mm-hmm. anywhere else. And I'm, I'm in that area of town a lot. So uh, I'm there. But, uh, you know, um, uh, I, sometimes I don't know if I'm if I'm taking enough vitamins. Yeah, I really don't. I I think I eat healthy, mm-hmm. but I, sometimes I wonder if I'm really eating healthy. I I recently had, I mean I, I just, recently had a, uh, I don't know. I mean it's uh, I'm kind of at a loss. This isn't um this is by no means medical advice in any capacity. But recently I've been like I've been watching more of what I've been eating and I've been going to the gym more often because of this whole this whole uh, this performance I'm a part of, like I've told you guys about where I'm going to be like doing a lot of, uh, heavy lifting. So like I went back to the gym and I've been watching my diet a little bit more. And, um, recently I, I took a trip and came back and started feeling a little bit sick. And so like, I just took a day off. I took some vitamins and I made sure to keep myself, like I kept myself hydrated and everything. And like, I may, I may have been like, fully ill for like the rest of the day but by the next morning i was like man i feel like a whole new person i still kept it easy i still kept myself hydrated i made sure to eat healthy and my vitamins and all that stuff but by the time like the weekend was over i was like i mean i feel i feel fine so i'm still you know like i I, and at that time i was like okay i'm still going to be cautious in case for whatever reason i don't want to over overextend myself but i was like I, i remember a time whenever i would get knocked out for what felt like a week or so and now i'm you know it may have been a day or so and i got me it could have been a number of things but for me i was like i i know that i've been more proactive in my health and i think it is i I'm, i like to think that it's showing a little bit so i have a question for you miss lucy yes. um in your store um how do you balance promoting products that are healthy with the challenge of keeping them affordable and accessible because if you go to the, any store Walmart market or Whole Foods or whatever, it, it's so expensive to eat healthy these days. It's just convenient to go get something that's really bad for you, throw it in the microwave, throw it in the oven. How, how, how do you do that in your store? How do you work with that? 
Well, I try the. My goal is get a good quality product. Uh, they're gonna be a little bit more expensive than the ones that you get mm -hmm. you know, those places that you just mentioned. Um, but when you see the result, like he was saying, yeah, if you start taking all this, you know, vitamin C and your multivitamins and your probiotics, and you get something getting, you know, sick, you can tell your body recuperate faster because it's strong. Your immune system is strong, and it's because you're taking a good supplements. Mm -hmm. So when people start seeing that, then you know it really makes a difference. But um, price layer, I mean, I have company that had really really good and also have a good prices and it's just kind of depend what it has on it mm -hmm. i have a, a multivitamin that has a lot of stuff on it but if you come back and say well and my doctor said i need more vitamin d so just pretty common now because everybody had deficiency of vitamin d so is there like is there like things you look for in products where you're like oh i, I need to stay away from that you know like like in your store like if you or like trying to get new new products or items if yeah, there's like I, I if there's ingredients see, or things you're like yep, yeah I'm not like the D three then now I recommended to take it with the K two mm -hmm. and a lot of places you go it's just they plain D three and then people come back and said I was taking D three for a long time and it just came from the doctor and it's still low mm. and I give you the one that we have the chewable the so Michaels and three months later people come back with the test result and said look mm. it went up so. Mm. That's the, you know, that the whole thing about giving something that work. What, what are some, uh, you know, we all know about your, your basic vitamins, vitamin A, vitamin B, vitamin C. What are some, some supplements out there that are not quite as known that are very, very helpful? That just, it just, it, it's just not in the common knowledge that you hear people talk about. Well, normally when people, People go to the store, they already have a diagnosis, or sometimes they just come and see, well, I want to just feel healthy, I want to feel better. Um, and I know that a lot of people, they have issues with inflammation. Yeah, they, that's a big That's my, a main thing to, I think it causes a lot of problems in our body, even mm -hmm. deteriorate the immune system and the consumption of sugar. Yep. Mm. Have to tell people is it <laughs> yep. please cut back in sugar mm -hmm. because they're having so many problems with health and so when I start recommending stuff I always kind of ask them what they're doing how is their lifestyle and I just get suggestion what I can do and when I start saying well you know, in the morning I can barely move I said well there is some products like curcumin it's turmeric and it's not like the regular turmeric that you can get the yellow pow powder and mix it, such as being in YouTube and TikTok and all that. Uh, it's something really powerful. I mean, it's so powerful they can go deep in your cells. They have clinical studies. The doctor they're doing, I got all these names, the doctor doing the clinical researches on it. On oh, turmeric? Yeah, but it's specific one brand. The one Euro brand. Pharma, they had the uh, uh, Curamed. Curamed, that's the name Curamed. of it. Curamed? That okay. product is really powerful. It can help you with arthritis, osteoarthritis, cancer, diabetes, uh, inflammation, you know, several things. I'm gonna have to try some of that. <laughs> that might be we'll something. Stop by to the get. Star, you know, give you. Yeah, I might try that. What about? I've been hearing a lot about mushrooms mm. and mushroom powder. Oh. What's what's the 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 thing about mushrooms it or is this the the magical <laughs> unicorn of of uh, the magic, the mushroom. magic unicorn of i think uh, there i think there's some truth in some of it but i think a lot of it also is fat some, i think it's fat a lot of yeah that's kind of what i'm yeah. i'm just i'm curious i mean yeah. you, you would know better than me i just see what i see on tv or in advertisements Everything kind of goes like a waves, you know. Sometimes you see a product that come, everybody's taking it, and everybody's mm -hmm. talking about apple cider vinegar. Everybody's talking. So the, right now we are in the mushroom thing. Mushroom has been used in general health for a long time, and they have an ex extract that actually is a beta glucan to boost your immune system. And there are you know different kinds of mushroom, but like I said, you have to really get it from a, a good source. Right. Because, I mean, there is a lot of stuff that said it has lion's mane and this and that, and and sometimes they're not. Some, Mar some of, yeah, some Miranda, of the Miranda, I know you got something <laughs> going on. Well, you know, I, 
I know all the weird stuff. Um, <laughs> some of the leading research in oncology with natural supplements is all geared towards specific mushroom extracts. And, you know, we're not talking about the standard like cordyceps or anything right. like that. There, there are some really oddball ones, particularly out of the Asian countries, that are doing some phenomenal things. And there's also, in addition to um, the, their anti-carcinogenic type of properties, they have some neurological properties. So people are really jumping on board with that. But when you, have, when you think about it, there's more fungi organisms on Earth than people. Or, right. or or types of other organisms. So the fact that they might have independently evolved to contain, you know, some of these compounds that might be beneficial, it it makes sense. Um, but the the research in there, like there's whole branches of functional medicine. That's that's all they touch is different mushroom sciences. Okay. Well. Because I, you know, I've been seeing. It, I was like, well, oh, yeah. there's something to this. I'm now. in the I'm in the coffee world, and everyone's talking about mushroom coffee. And some of the again, if sourced correctly and if done properly, there I think there is some. It's it's cool. It's interesting. But more often than not, a lot of these convenient brands, they're just putting some stuff in there, making it taste funny. And they're like, ooh, it's doing so many things, and it's just, <laughs> it's, just it's a fad. It's all you know. It's like I don't think it's really doing anything, but you know. But that's a thing. It's a good point to make about brands is that. Um, we've all heard of Big Pharma. Big Pharma has had their eyes on the nutraceutical industry oh, for quite for some time. time. And they have been systematically buying up a lot of companies. So it's like Bragg's Vinegar, you know, bought, bought up a couple of years ago. Um, there's a lot of different things. You know, back when I was in the nutraceutical industry, the owner of that company said usually every 12 to 18 months, a big pharma company would approach them and say, how much, how much for your company? And when you look at, you know, the top players in the whole nutraceutical world and in the health and wellness world, the biggest player is Amway. I remember Amway mm-hmm. back in the day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. but Amway has been buying up vitamin companies, drug companies, I didn't supplement think they still companies. still around. They're, they're, it's just in a different fashion. They're, yeah, they're they're in the same way that you know, like how you have Nestle and L'Oreal and these giant conglomerates. Amway's number one, and who who would have thought? No, you know nobody ever anticipated that. Uh, Amway bought out Metagenics, and Metagenics was the largest physician only mm-hmm. dietary supplement company. It's it's now Amway. Hmm. So, you, like I said, you have to do your research. Um, a lot of the small mom and pop companies, because of FDA regulations, have kind of been forced out, or they're forced to sell to other players. Because with the FDA guidelines on how um, companies have to meet manufacturing guidelines, the bigger the company, the faster they had to hit those guidelines. So the smaller companies had a longer length of time to to hit those goals. Um, but that forced, that was an administrative burden that forced a lot of the smaller companies to sell, to just to close up their doors or sell. So, you know, when you see some of these small companies or like buying from other countries, they have stronger guidelines, manufacturing guidelines that they have to adhere to. And sometimes that's safer than buying American made product, which you hate to say because you always want to buy, you buy USA. But, um, yeah, like, but you know, yeah. some, of, some of the European standards are far superior Higher. to what we have. Mm. And that's a shame. It really is because, you know, you do want to buy made in the USA, but I, I sometimes wonder some things I would rather not be made from, you know, here because I just, our standards are not very, well, it, are just not very tight. And I, it's just, it's a shame. And It depends on what you want to buy, you know. So it's like, like I said, like all vitamin C pretty much comes from China. There's certain there's certain ingredients that you can only get from the European or the Asian market. Um, China has gone out of their way to buy up a lot of supplement manufacturers and raw material suppliers, um, just like how they bought up most of the drug manufacturing facilities around the world. So it's it's part of a con- kind of a concerted effort. I, I want to touch on something Jason said there, but when when you look at and there's something in the news really big right now that the FDA just got called out for over supposedly over 50% of their money comes from big pharma and agriculture. 
And so they, what they did was in the last couple of days, they put out their, their list of funding and it was only 47% comes from big pharma and agriculture. So how can you govern or, or manage something that they're paying you to do? So the FDA was originally designed to take care of Americans. It's the Food and Drug Administration, and they're supposed to govern companies to protect us. But when Miranda said this er earlier, pay to play, that's what they're doing. They're not protecting us because 50% of their funding comes from agriculture and big pharma. And it, it's kind of crazy because they just got called out on it, but only 47% of our funding comes from that. They're it's still 50%. Also the biggest owner of uh, vaccine patents out there, too. So. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, but, yeah, with, with the FDA, and this is what's interesting, is you'll always see certain, certain people selling supplements online will we'll make comments about, or, or even certain doctors, well, don't take supplements. It's not FDA approved. Well, the FDA does not approve or disapprove dietary supplements. What they do have purveyance over, however, is the manufacturing facilities that make dietary supplements. So when I worked for one, we were just down the road from the FDA. They, whenever they had a new person to train, they would bring them over. They want to come in. They want to check your SOPs, your manufacturing guidelines. They want to make sure everything is made in a clean environment. But they have no control over what you put out. But they do have control over what you say and what you advertise. And so that's why a lot of companies will have, you know, all that little fine print on the bottom of ads in health food magazines. Because as a, the FDA says, you cannot say a health food or a supplement does anything. Because if you say it does something, that's making a drug claim. So you have to say vitamin C supports healthy arterial health. Or, you know, uh, magnesium supports healthy brain function. You can only say that a supplement helps support normal function. You can't say it does anything or you're making a drug claim. Well, you know, that kind of brought back some memories of a, of a, a podcast I listened to regarding the foundations of the American Medical Association and how really prior to the AMA becoming the de facto kind of governing body um there was really two schools of medicine there was doctors with traditional drugs that was developing and then you had holistic health which is basically herbs and stuff like that that people went out in the yard and used as part of healing and it was very interesting to see how the AMA really squashed that side of medicine. It was amazing the number of medical schools at one time that trained medical professionals in holistic health, just as they had medical schools with kind of the traditional route that we understand today. But at some point in our history, it wasn't that long ago, um, there was two schools of medicine, and they were equally viewed in a positive way. Um, unfortunately, um, they needed to make doctors to be able to make money, and so to basically make them where people would need to go to them, Guess well, you have happened? to look at it like Guess this. Guess what happened? Yeah. Well, there, there's they a, started squashing the other side. And, and it's why they do that. It's like, why doesn't the government want you to steal or kill? Because they don't want the competition. Heaven forbid you find something that can actually cure or help a person, then the medical field is going to come in and make it illegal. And you can't buy or sell it anymore because it's not a drug. What is it? A cured patient is a non-paying patient anymore. So they don't actually want us healthy. They are trying to keep us to live longer, keeping us living longer, and sick. They don't want us healthy because right. if we actually got healthy one day, we wouldn't need them. Then they wouldn't be making these high dollars. Why do you think these doctors made so much money off of the COVID vaccine and saying how many car accidents the person died from COVID? Because they don't want us healthy. They have never wanted us healthy. And this goes back to our friend J.D. Rockefeller 
who spent $125 million in 1905 to create a school system that created stupid people, but he was also one of the first founding members of a pharmaceutical company that was petroleum-based because he said, I'm going to keep people sick and slaves, and I'm going to bankrupt America because they tried to take away his his, uh, petroleum companies. So this is a direct attack on the American family. Yet again, I know our listeners are tired of me saying this, <laughs> but it's still the truth. This is a direct attack on the Americans, and it's not stopping. Well, that, that episode I just looked up, um, what I was telling you about, uh, is what it was called, it's, called it's, it's, it's no longer playing anymore, but the archives is While the Rest of Us Die. Mm. And that episode dealing with food, it was, it's called Food Kills. So if anybody wants to check that out, it's uh, it's very sobering of what we're experiencing now. And it's only gotten worse because a lot of our farmland is being bought up. A lot of our food producing mm-hmm. facilities are now owned by foreign countries. Mm-hmm. We're sending food off to other countries to get processed and then and brought then back. back. Mm-hmm. Yep. Come back. I, I have a hard issue. I mean, I have a hard problem you know, with that. I really do. Miss Lucy, let me throw something your way. I believe one of the, biggest scams put on the American public was the, um, the, the food pyramid. Um, and, and that was mostly led by the grain industry and the dairy industry to say, you need so much grain, so much dairy, but we're going to stop you from wanting fats in your diet. This is what you need over here. What do you think about the food pyramid and holistic and just a healthy lifestyle? I really think it does. You really don't have to do the pyramid the way they, you know, they're telling you to do. You necessarily have to have a balance of what you're mm-hmm. eating. Uh, grains, it used to be something that people eat all the time when it was really like a real grain, no, like genetic modified. Right. They were eating now with who knows what put it in there. You can't find out anything. There's corn, wheat, any of those grains, they are not genetic modified. Mm-hmm. So... That's just a no no. So if we're so gonna no, add the pyramid and we're no gonna grains. add all those, you can do some grains, but I mean you have to get make sure they are organic, they're non genetic, non GMO. Right. And um and just kind of give it a diet more like a Mediterranean style. I well, like I was about ready to say that. That's what that's, I was saying. The Mediterranean diet, I have heard that is the diet. My doctor that. tells mm-hmm. me that all the time. Mediterranean diet. Mm-hmm. What does that consist of? It's Balance. Um, a lot of fish. Really? Nuts, fish, vegetables. Yep. So you're still going to have your proteins and stuff and not as right. much carbs. But Very definitely carbs. something. And no seed oils because we are I was, overly that was gonna go. That was going to go my next thing all, about all the oils. Oil is, all yes. those oils that cause inflammation. Mm-hmm. So that's mm. the problem that we have. Inflammation. So I always said avocado oil, coconut oil, and olive oil. That's the only that's one. That's it. Well, that's I use a I lot of, it. that's all I use mm-hmm. is, co- now I don't use coconut oil, but I've heard a lot of good things about coconut oil. Coconut oil has a, um, co- it helps prevent Alzheimer's. It helps. Coconut it oil. Helps. Yep. If they, you they make, have, yeah, they have found that people that take at least a tablespoon of it a day, their mm-hmm. incident rate of Alzheimer's, it's like cut by like 80%. Really? Yes. Wow, I'm gonna pass that. I'm gonna pass that on to my my mother. I recommend it with the curamed. They told you when yeah. people come with Alzheimer or dementia or want to prevent it. That's what I recommend it. I said take the curamed and get like stir fried or whatever with your coconut oil or put the coconut oil in something hot tea. Any drinks, just stir it around it and, and drink it. You drink it when the time that you same time that you're doing the uh, curamed. Now I hear about when it comes to oils olive oil and coconut oil and avocado oil, when you warm it up or use it to cook, it supposedly degrades. Is that true? Does it lose its potency if you use it to to to, to cook something? I mean... It depends is the million dollar answer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, if you're cooking it for a long, long extended periods of time, yes. And certain heat, certain oils are much more um, unstable given heat. But they used to always say, don't heat olive oil, you know, use use peanut oil, use avocado oil, use whatever. But they're actually backtracking on that now and saying it olive oil is much more stable than what they anticipated before. Okay. We cook with olive oil here. Yeah. Same. Me too. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I, I use, well, I use avocado oil a lot to cook with, and then mm-hmm. uh, I usually use olive oil for finishing finishing or put some, I mean, I, 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 because I'd heard it doesn't have a very high smoke point. Yeah. And it, it, not like, like avocado oil, I heard it's better mm-hmm. when it comes to that, so that's why I use. So, yeah. Um, uh, I, matter of fact, uh, of course, you know, when we, when we have these things, I always like to look at kind of, we, we are a generational podcast. So I like to see how the, the different generations kind of, uh, view these topics. But, uh, I pulled up an article here. Y'all may have seen this. It's, uh, out of nutraceutical. I don't know if you've heard of that. I, I subscribe. Ah, <laughs> gen, generational divide, the drivers behind dietary supplement demands. Um, they say here the total global dietary supplement market saw a CAGR. Now, I don't know what that stands for because I can't find the, the an acronym for that, but uh, of, of 5.2% during 2016 to 2021, which led to a market revenue of $76 billion in, 20, in 2021. Uh, growth in the industry is projected to continue at uh, CAGR of 2.4% during 21 through 26. Um, uh, market expansion is, is also probably giving consumers heightened focus on health and wellness. For example, approximately 20% of European consumers. CAGR stands for compound annual growth rate. Okay, well, then there it is. Um Twenty uh, percent of European consumers said they use dietary supplements. Um, I'm trying to see here. I saw something about Generation X and and all that. <laughs> it says many European consumers are new to the dietary supplement category. Thirty four percent. The Generation X demographic reports the highest proportion using dietary supplements for one to three years. Comparatively, forty eight percent of Generation Z. And 49% of millennials, the highest proportion across all age groups, reported they've been using the products for less than one year. The high percentage of European consumers who have been using supplements for less than a year raises questions about the longevity of usage. I'm curious about that. When you see people in your store and you get them on a dietary supplement, how long are they consistent with it? I mean, is it, I mean, is, is, there's a kind of a natural waning over time. It's like, okay, I'm done. Or I just kind of get out of the habit of doing it. Or what do you, what, what in your, what do you see in your, your practice? What I see is when people go to the store, for example, and say, look, I want to do something different. I've been feeling so tired. I went to the doctor. All my tests are normal, but I just don't feel that way. Right. I feel horrible. Tell me what to do. And I, I said, well, let's start with something just in general. A good multi, omega-3. And I normally recommend the omega-3, a specific brand. They had zero mercury because we have to be really careful with Yeah, I heard about mercury. You don't, they don't have to put it in the label if they have a small amounts of mercury. I work with a company called Northern Natural. They had the, stand, the European standards, which is really high, and they have no mercury, none. So and this, what's this company called? Nordic Natural. Northern? Nordic. Nordic Natural. Natural. Okay. Mm-hmm. Miranda, have you heard of that company? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, they have uh, quite a few different flavored fish oils as well, and ones with different EPA and DHA, yeah, DHA. ratios. Mm-hmm. Um, because a lot of people don't like that kind of regurgitation or that after, you know, the after burp. And right. every, every company will say, oh, you won't do it with ours. But you will, you depend, because... You, they have no way to know how much hydrochloric acid you have or if you have your gallbladder or you don't or any of these other situations. So any oil, you can burp it up. But if it is a – I will tell people never buy your fish oil from, like, a big box store because it is the second you open Loaded. that package, it starts going rancid because it's an oil. So you always you only want to buy your oils in about a 30-day supply. Okay. And if you tend to kind of burp them up, I tell people to stick them in the freezer. So when you, when you take it, eat a little bit of food, take your fish oil, eat a little bit of more food, and it kind of gets sandwiched in your stomach in a layer between two, two layers of food. And so it gets pushed down into the duodenum. And there, once it's there, you're not going to burp up anything. 
And if it's frozen, one, you're not going to smell it, and it's probably not going to thaw until it hits your duodenum also. So it, it has the best chance of getting through your stomach where it's not going to, the capsule's not going to open up, and it creates this little filmy, oily layer in your stomach that any gas has to bubble through and come back up. Hmm. So okay. my, my little tips and tricks. <laughs> yeah. Now, that seminar I just went to a couple weekends ago, which was all about aging better, so, you know, like um, get to the finish line and leave a, you know, leave a fully functional corpse kind of thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> he, he was huge, 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 huge on the importance of EPA, which is one of the components of fish oil yes. for preventing Alzheimer's and any type of brain dementia. So he said, if you do nothing else, you need to be having adequate levels of vitamin D and you have to be taking, uh, I think he said 1.8 grams of EPA every day. Okay. Yeah. And something else I've recommended also is the probiotics, especially if they have pre and pro together to help you rebuild the good bacteria because that's pretty much where your immune system is start getting stronger. You can just, you know, add some other stuff to... To help yeah, it stay f- good, but this is what it starts. That's so it. funny. You talk about pro- probiotics. Uh, every doctor I have talked to oh, said, yeah. throw all that in a garbage can. <laughs> it's just... Well, because most of it is marketed incorrectly. And so th- this this is my bailiwick because I've dealt with probiotics on the nutraceutical side of things for 30 years. Um, when you go into, the, into, let's say, Whole Foods and you see the refrigerated probiotics, that's a marketing gimmick. Mm-hmm. All probiotics in this country, by law, have to be shelf-stable. So if you see ones that say, oh, it's refrigerated, you have, don't buy it if it's not refrigerated, bull. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but they legally have to be shelf-stable. The enemies of probiotics are heat and moisture. So, you know, that's why when people say, well, I get all my probiotics from yogurt, bull. Because when you eat it, you're chewing it up. It's going through your system. It's hitting stomach acid. That stomach acid is very hot. It's caustic. It's breaking it down. So very few cultures that you eat orally, or if you had a chewable probiotic, or if you had a liquid probiotic, very few is going to get to the end destination. Because your probiotics don't work until they hit your large intestine, which is the last six feet of the, what, 40 feet of our, our GI tract. So, you know, so what I tell people to do is the complete opposite of what most pack is. Most packaging is geared towards selling more probiotics. The best way to take probiotics so you actually get benefit from it is to take it before bed on an empty stomach. Because when you take a probiotic with food, it's going to churn around in your stomach for about two hours before it gets put into the duodenum. And that's going to kill off a huge percentage of what you just paid good money for. If you take it on an empty stomach, it's going to get spit into your duodenum within 20 minutes. So you've got a, you're kind of giving it the straight shot through the stomach acid into where it can start moving down to do some good. When you if you take it first thing in the morning, you're up, you're active, your bowels are active. So it's getting pushed through. At night is the longest period of bowel inactivity or bowel rest that you have. So if you want the best chance of colonizing some of those good bacteria, you're going to take it right before bed on an empty stomach, and then it can sit there and grow in you for the next eight hours because most people don't get up in the middle of the night to have a bowel movement. So, you know, but if you read a probiotic label, they'll say take three times a day with food, which is the worst way to take a probiotic. Hmm. Interesting. I'm glad you clarified that uh, to take it at night because I thought you were fixing to tell us that we needed to take a suppository. <laughs> 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 that might work too. Put it right to the source. Oh, man. <laughs> just, just stick so, that I sucker mean, it, right it, in there it, and get it going. Is, oh, is there a, is there a better form? Is it better in a pill form? Is it a powder? Or be, no, we, you you want a pill. You want yeah, a pill. You want a we pill. Better. Yes, mm-hmm. um, because mm-hmm. you want to get it through the stomach acid. Right. So anything that's a powder, a liquid, a chewable, it's it, you're going to lose too much of mm-hmm. it in in your stomach acid. So you you want to kind of get it. Fast, fast track it through that area as quickly as possible where it can do some good. Okay. Right. Well. Mm. I have a question for you, Miss Lucy. Um, what impact do you hope your store has on the local community and a broader movement towards healthier living? Are you active in the community? Do you, what, what are you doing? How, how do you see your store helping the community out? The way that I see it is when people come to me, most likely refer for other people that are seeing results with the stuff I recommended. 
um, is just, you know, make them feel better mm-hmm. and be able to enjoy life and do everything, you know, they, they can do and just taking the, you know, the right supplements and noticing a difference. So that's my goal, just to, when people walk by the store, just can help. And I not only recommend the stuff to take, just supplement things. I always kind of guide them to what kind of food that you take. If they have any condition, then I try to help. But sometimes I even go to the grocery store with them mm-hmm. and tell them, okay, you can get this. Look, look at the label. Make sure that, you know, that when you look for something, look up from here. So I go with them and go to the, you know, grocery. And normally uh, next to Albertson, so they have a lot yeah. of organic things and stuff that is really good for you that can keep you a healthy lifestyle and plus taking their supplements and then you know they come back and said wow it really makes a difference i feel better i feel i have a question for you um we know that health and supplements is very trendy and it changes constantly so what would you say is the top three supplements that you sell right now because i know it's probably very different from two years ago but because that's constantly changing but what are your top three supplements that you sell at the moment at the moment, um, I would say the multivitamin, mm-hmm. uh, for sure. Um, the Curamed, a lot of people with inflammation, and pretty much this is head-to-toe help. Um, and there is something for diabetes. They have clinically tested, and it's been... What is that? It's called Sue Control from Terry, uh, Europharma, the same company that I'm telling you they have clinical research. There's all medical doctors and naturopathic doctors. They do all these researches, and they're published, so you can look it up. What does that and do for diabetes? It just, like, helps? It helps with lower the A1C levels. Mm, okay. And they have some studies that even say they reverse diabetes type 2. Wow. They help you with insulin resistance. And I even have a few doctors, I cannot say their name, but uh, right, right. they send patients to the store because they see in results after what are you doing? What? How you get all this th- number down and you're not yeah. taking the medication? I said, well, I'm going to lose it. And she gave me this. And I that's call awesome. you and just say that I can take it and look. Yeah. So Well, that's one good thing that I can say. You know, I've been in practice since 2001. And back when I got started, you very, very rarely ever had a patient that came in and said, well, my doctor told me to take dietary supplements. But now it's routine where your patients will come and say, oh, well, my doctor told me to take vitamin D and fish oil and this and that. And you just never saw that before because the medical community has very, been very reticent to recommend supplementation. And they're still, not, they're still not in it 100%, but there are certain ones that they acknowledge and that they do recommend. So, you know, most medical providers are still poo-pooing vitamin C, even though I'm a huge proponent of it. Um, but they, they have glommed on to vitamin D. And there is a group of scientists called um, the Vitamin D Council that have kind of put together all the big research on vitamin D. And you can go onto their website, and it's absolutely fascinating because every vitamin D scientist in the world says what the RDA is for vitamin D, which is about 1,000 um, IUs or international units, is woefully inadequate. What we really need is anywhere from 4,000 to 10,000 IUs a day. (laughs) Oh, wow. So we're probably going to see that change. Um, on the RDA level, but we have we have the battle with you know the registered dietitians who want everybody to get everything from food. They don't believe in supplements, and so they're kind of fighting that RDA change. But there are we do know that certain things like vitamin D, what, what wh- they're saying we need is just it's nowhere enough to do. Wh- why is there so much? It seems like nobody can get on the same page. It seems like there's so many factions fighting, yeah. and you would think they would eventually get to a point to say well i mean if if they've published research showing benefits here then okay what are we getting wrong here i mean what what are we missing well you have I to mean, remember where the research comes from because most research comes from big pharma and so um universities don't have the fun you know universities are where research happens they don't have the funds to go out and and test all these different supplements because nobody's paying for it. And dietary supplements cannot be patented. 
So if you go and do all this research on yeah, who's paying, on who's vitamin doing, D, who's spending the money? There, there's there's no point because you can't turn around and monopolize that monetarily. Right. Um, whereas you know, it, well, here's a perfect example that I used to have a supplement that I would use um, that was called Geranax, and it was a geranium extract. It was incredible for helping people lose weight. It was just like you took that, you just didn't want to eat. It was wonderful. Well usually if a dietary supplement helps people lose weight, about every two years the FDA will come down on it like a ton of bricks, and they'll say, oh, no, we're pulling that from the market. It's dangerous because uh, two people collapsed from taking it. But meanwhile, they were like Army recruits that were, you know, took ten times the amount that they should right. have. But they'll say it's dangerous. Two people died or two people collapsed. We're pulling it from the market. Well, Geranax was one of those products. Um, I started selling that back, I think, in, oh, gosh, like, 2012, 2013. And I did every single person I put on it lost weight. Every single one. I had a hundred percent success rate with it. Then the FDA came out and said, we're pulling it from the market because it's dangerous. Well, guess, guess what happened about a year later, quietly, when you read the news, big pharma bought up the rights to Geranax <laughs> and, and it is now a chemotherapy drug. So they can charge so they, a they can, bunch of they money. They can sell it. They can sell it under a chemo because now it is a drug. It is not no longer a nutraceutical. They can sell huge money, twenty thousand dollars a dose. Where I used to sell Whoa. bottles of pills for like forty bucks. Oh wow, <laughs> that's so depressing. <laughs> wow. But that's that's what happens in this industry. So that's so depressing. Yeah. That goes back to what I was talking about with the right. AMA and in the FD in the in the drug industry that started evolving. It, in the late 1800s and the early 1900s. I mean, it's just, it's unbelievable. That, and I, I've always said this. I believe there's cures. The world provides cures for every disease out there. Mm-hmm. I think nature has those cures. I just think that's how just well, big pharma everything sends, balance itself out. Big Pharma has a whole roster of anthropologists and... Um, well, yeah, chemists they, and everybody they, they that got the they, money. They, well, they send them into the you know, like you know into the Amazon ra- basin, and they look for all these things because they'll find a plant, then they'll take it back to the lab and they'll dissect the mm-hmm. plant, and then they'll say, okay, this compound, what does it resemble? Oh, it resembles methamphetamines. Okay, let's turn that compound. We'll isolate it, and now we'll make a new ADHD drug. And that's almost all new drug research is coming from what these scientists bring back from plants but they have to have to find a way to synthesize it because they don't want to be pulling you know thousands of pounds of raw material from the jungle they find a compound that they can synthesize right and then oop, new drug and they make it in their mm-hmm. labs which also means petroleum based more than likely petroleum based yeah well so we've talked a lot about drugs that are for for health and you know diabetes and cancer and so what about stuff for like mental health you know health like psychological health are there supplements out there that deal with that aspect well i normally recommended the dha such as as part of the omega-3 uh-huh and the epa right That's one thing i always tell people take because the health is the only one that can go to the barriers of the brain the good fat that's pretty much our brain is fat so we feed in there and then kind of help with a lot of problems that you have in your brain d you said dh dha dha what does that stand for Oh, just curious. It's a dex. Yeah, I, I, dihydro something. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Uh, everybody's just pulling it's, out Google. The last word is acid. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, oh, that's a good one. And there is a lot of other things, like Doxa lately has having a lot of acid. <laughs> Doxahexanoic doc, acid. Yeah, there you go. Oh, okay, all right. right. <laughs> Just for our <laughs> listeners out there. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of people, they have issues with, like, stress, such as... Yeah, that, that, what, what would you take for stress? What supplements? Normally recommended multivitamin. Really? Okay. Mm-hmm. Just kind of standard. Has all the nutrients. Uh, B-complex. They okay. have some, they already convert with methyl folate, methyl B12. Same thing with, depre- same thing with depression? Depression, yes. You can... You know, like I said, the DHA would help. 
Uh, there are some uh, supplements called SAMI. It's a long name too. Uh -huh. S A M E. And um, I mean, a different thing that people can take to help. If it's uh, something about brain, like nonstop before you go to sleep, there is a magnesium, the specific kind. It's called three and eight. It goes through the barriers of the brain and calm, so that makes you sleep better and they help you with different things in your brain and just. What about green tea extract? Green tea is a powerful antioxidant, okay. and it can be used in just to kind of help you to calm a little bit. It has some caffeine, but the effect in your body just kind of makes you relax. They also help you if you're trying to lose weight. They kind of help you flush some of the fat out. The problem with green tea is uh, it is used in a lot of supplements. It is one of those uh, kitchen sink ingredients that, you know, because people will make a lot of claims about green tea, but most of the time you're not taking enough of it to do anything. Right. But if you are an avid green tea drinker, you have to be very careful because it tends to be very high in fluoride and it tends to be very high in uh, one of the other metals. Um, and it can affect actually breast cancer. So you, you don't, you don't want to take too much because it will, it will decrease your bone health and it will, dec you know, it, it increases your odds of breast cancer, but you always hear of teas being very common and I'm a huge advocate of teas, but you really don't ever want to drink more than three cups of any kind of tea a day. Right. Oh, because yeah. you'll just be getting I, too many yeah, compounds. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm yeah. just, I've mm -hmm. heard about it, um, uh, that it was, that it's fairly healthy. Uh, some of these other uh, supplements that I have taken, uh, speaking with, talking with Jennifer, um, is uh, uh, elderberry. Mm -hmm. That's good for the immune support. system. Um, mm -hmm. And what's the other one? I'm drawing a blank on it Ashwanda. right now. Ashwanda. Well, I, I, have, I have not taken that one. But talk about know. that one a little bit. What's that one? I usually recommend that for stress to help you maintain your adrenal. Okay. Is it adaptogen, so it helps yeah, to balance your adaptogen. cortisol levels? Mm -hmm. Okay. I've heard about adaptogens from Brandon. It, it, <laughs> exactly. Um, uh, what's, uh, but there's another one that is also good that you take when you feel like you're getting sick. Echinacea. Echinacea. Mm -hmm. That's for centuries has been knowing like a really good. But if you get hay investor, fever, don't take you don't it want because to you'll get it. sick. <laughs> oh, wow. Why is that? It, mean, it just it's in that same plant compound, that same grouping that uh, that people that hay fever it will aggravate them. Like how peaches, if, pe if you if you tend to get hay fever, you can't really eat peaches without getting sick. Wow. The same thing is with echinacea. Okay. Mm -hmm. They're they're just they're related compounds. Wow. I have a question for you, and it's kind of a simpleton question. What mm -hmm. about just pure honey? If it's Local pure, honey. pure honey, um, Love it, it. It, it's it, if you get it locally, it helps Better. you with your um, allergies and things like that. What's what's yeah. your take on just pure honey? Yeah, I like the pure honey. Just it's better than sugar. Maybe one teaspoon a day. <laughs> mm -hmm. Definitely but, uh, better than better sugar. sugar. It's sweet, but it's not the processed, you know, sugar. So yes, I'm um, take. I mean, actually, I take my lemon. Olive Cause, oil cause and over the years, one of the best cough syrups is to um, take a shot of whiskey mm -hmm. and then follow it with a big tablespoon of honey. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so you, wait a minute. You said in the morning you do you take honey, olive oil, hu what, olive oil, honey, honey, and lemon, and lemon every morning. I do that before I oh, start wow. my day. Kind of glad I asked that question. Now that's <laughs> a pretty good little concoction there. Yeah. You just put it in a little cup and just. Just I have it right there by my kitchen, and I mix and I fix it, and I drink it every morning. Wow. Okay. So what, so what is that? I guess I, I guess that's doing a couple of different things, but what is that? I just like the honey, just okay, because it yeah. boosts your immune, and then the olive yeah. oil is kind of keep everything clean and nice. At night, when we kind of rejuvenate or our process of cleaning your body in the morning, everything is all the glue stuff is there, so kind of help you get it out. Love it. Olive and oil, lemon. honey, and lemon. But honey is like a natural preservative. They have yeah. honey a thousand years old that you and could still probably good. still eat. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, they found it in the pyramids, and it's still edible. Yeah, it, so. it, that's the only thing that you would eat 
That would be a thousand years old mm-hmm. because even McDonald's French fries could lay in some. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that the McDonald's French fries were edible, but the honey has actually been proven. They look to the be same. Still edible. Well, you know, in Russia, when they find these animals frozen in the in the steppes of Russia, yeah. like the woolly mammoths and, yeah. and the rhinoceros right. and things, people eat them. Yep. People eat it. them. The fifty, you know, ten, fifteen thousand year old meat. People Crazy. are mowing down. I have a friend who who has bees that he he does beekeeping as like a a little hobby of his. The so, apiarian industry. So so every now and then he'll he'll give me a little jar of honey and it's uh it's really nice actually. <laughs> I've really been enjoying that. So I don't I actually probably don't use honey as much as I should, especially for having probably the quality of honey that I do. But you, you like your fun facts, Tony. You mm-hmm. usually interrupt mm-hmm. with a fun fact. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, my uncle was a beekeeper growing up. And fun fact, the beekeepers' children have a higher percentage chance of being allergic to bees than any other person. Wow, really? Mm-hmm. Is it just exposure or something? Or? They, they, think that, they think that something gets passed down, and they haven't been able to pinpoint it, but they know that the children of beekeepers have, it's like 800 times more um, allergies to bees, and, wow. it, and it is uh, grossly anaphylactic. It's not mild. It's it's hugely oh, wow. anaphylactic. Interesting. Yeah, if my cousin too. got stung with a bee, and this is how I found out about it. If my cousin got stung by a bee, four days in a coma every wow. single time. Oh my gosh, that's not good. Wow, that's scary, and also unfortunate too. Like I mean, that's well, when you go over to your uncle's house and you have to walk through because he has all you know. When bees get shipped to the beekeepers, they come in these yeah. little tiny. It looks like matchboxes. Yeah, and he would have them all lined up so he could go and take them to all of his his you know his bee. I don't know what they call them, bee huts, beehives, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Um, but he would have them all lined up on the side of the stairs. And so the kids had to play in the basement. You would have to run down past this buzzing <laughs> wall to, to get downstairs. No. We had to, it was quite terrifying as a small child. I bet. Um, and you didn't want to play outside at their house because if he, you know, if he didn't move the bees close yeah. <laughs> to where they were supposed to be, <laughs> oh, you know, it was like, you're not, you're not swimming uh, at your uncle's house. <laughs> wow. Well. Pretty crazy stuff. But, you know, that is that is healthcare. You either, you know, go back to kind of the old world way of doing things or you pay the price because modern technology has not been so kind to our health. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm going to tell you, I, I think right now you're kind of seeing a, a return. I mean, you're starting yep. to see more people wanting to grow their own food. We talked about that on some of the yeah. previous episodes yes. we were talking I, about. I, I think yeah. more people are looking at their health. Like, I mean, I'm looking at a study here uh, was done uh, by the International Food Information Council. This is in 2018. It said 80% of millennials consider health benefits when selecting foods compared to 64% for bo- for baby boomers. Mm-hmm. So, and it, I think a lot of that is just because of the, the world we live in, too, where I feel like so much is processed now. I feel like I'm I feel like if I'm not keeping my – speaking personally, if I'm not keeping myself informed, I feel like I'm doing my own health a disservice because so much is convenient and processed and messy that, like, I feel like I would love to have lived in a world where that wasn't a, a problem that I had to worry about, you know, that we're just – you know what I mean? Like, the food that I was getting was probably naturally sourced or was just like that – or from a local market I didn't have to worry about, you know? Right. I feel like I'm – I feel like I'm. It's it's almost being forced on me to like be more conscious about it, and I wish I didn't have to be. But you know, well, I want to be healthy. This is what's happened. We've had in, in our family's lifetime. You look at World War II. Everybody had Victory Gardens. People were growing their own food because with war rations, you didn't get everything that you needed. People were used to growing stuff. And prior to that, you had a much greater percentage of people that lived on farms. And so, again, mm-hmm. they were growing their food or they were trading. You know, one, one person grew beans, one person grew potatoes, they traded. So you still got fresh stuff. World War I, I mean, World War II happened, Victory Gardens. By the time that was over and by the time the 60s rolled around, you've got all those baby boomers that mm-hmm. kind of grew up and they just were, you know, they followed the party line. If the doctor said do something, they did it. If they said don't do it, they didn't do it. And then when the Gen Xers came around, they questioned everything. <laughs> and know. so they've, they've started that trend back towards um, doing all this stuff. And plus, we, we kind of hit in the 70s, you know, that second hippie wave of doing things. Because remember when margarine was a health food? Yeah, because oh I remember gosh. that. I re- early, now, early now, 80s. Now it's terrible. Yeah, now it's food plastic. Right. Um, but in 1979, 1980, 
you went into any health food store, they were it's selling margin, margarine. and it was marketed as high tech. Next, this is going to save you. Butter's bad. Margin wow. good. Um, so all of <laughs> all of this stuff has happened, and I think that you know the younger generations are kind of everybody's sick. It used to be that you didn't get sick until you're old. Now people are sick when they're young, and they're trying to do something about it. Well, one of the things we also have to consider, and and Miranda mentioned World War II, that was a huge turning point. Does anybody know where TV dinners came from? Oh yeah, where'd they come from? Yeah, it was uh, I think that was like it was war rations, or that was what was like MREs or whatever. I think yeah, that's mistaken. exactly then, yeah. what it was. Mm-hmm. And the government paid this company to come out and make these meals. For I the had soldiers. plenty of them as a kid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, th- then when the war was over, the guy was like, "Okay, what am I going to do now?" And uh, the government said, well, I'll tell you what, you keep making them, and we're going to give you some money for some advertisements. And they build it as a convenience for women. Look at what you can do. Put it in the oven for 35 minutes, and you have a pre, pre-ready made meal, and now you don't have to cook from scratch. And it took off. And so now everything is about convenience. Everything that we do is about mm-hmm. processed food being convenient. Well, I mean, And that's how they sold... I, the um the the the, the I, TV dinner. I I I get and I, I and I can understand for women at that time, considering that what went into food prep. That it's um uh, the amount of work mm-hmm. that we that went into that. So I can understand how ladies mm-hmm. of the time. Wow, I can just pull this thing out and put it in the oven and instant dinner. I can save five hours right off the bat. Right. And I don't have to sit I there mean, and stir so it for that one hour that I'm it, doing it. You know, I, I, I can understand. I'm, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I remember my mother telling me what my grandma did on the farm mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. just yep. how much work went into food preparation and feeding all your the kids. Well, the I mean, whole, I just, the, I whole, the whole process, that. the mean, whole process was was multifold. Okay, sourdough. Do oh, you know yeah. why they did sourdough, which is actually one of the best breads you can absolutely eat? But it served two purposes. Do you know what you use the starter for? I read something about sourdough not long ago. You you, mm-hmm. you made your okay. sourdough bread, your sourdough biscuits, but you also made the glue that could put the stuff in your house together. So sourdough starter so served a multi-purpose, which we don't do that anymore. And sourdough pancakes are absolutely fantastic. I don't know if you've <laughs> ever Oh, I love them, sourdough bread. I love sourdough. Right Anything yeah. sourdough is fantastic, but pancakes are, oh, my gosh. Well, do we have any more, any more questions you want to ask or anything else you want to touch on? Because I'm, I'm I mean, Lucy, great episode Lucy so far. is there anything you'd like to bring up? Is there any kind of new stuff maybe that's coming around the corner that of note? Uh, maybe a supplement that might be gaining some steam? Uh, that I would say that probably just trying to keep your body as healthy as you can, and that way you can get older and you know, suffer from so many problems right especially joint pains or inflammation in your body or stomach issues a lot of people had tremendous problem with heartburn indigestion mm-hmm. and you know they if they kind of keep doing the right thing taking the right supplement eating the right food exercising they're right. gonna get older feeling good well I can right really feel blessed because uh I mean, I try to do that, and I feel great. Mm-hmm. Well, we really appreciate you driving all the way out here to yeah. the studio. And for we have a bunch of listeners in Baton Rouge. Uh, would you like to tell them where you're located in case some of our Baton Rouge listeners want to come find you? Sure. I'm in um, Blue Bonnie Boulevard between Highland and Barbank. Mm-hmm. So they can just come into Lucy's Health Food Lucy's Store, Health just Foods. ask for Lucy? <laughs> That's <where's> correct. Lucy? <laughs> yeah, I am. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming out. I really You're appreciate welcome. you Thank this. you for the invitation. Lucy, I really yeah, enjoyed it. Thank you so mm-hmm. much. This has been very interesting. I've always been fascinated with this topic because it's, it's just so much information out there, and you don't know if you're getting oh, the yeah. right information or not. So mm-hmm. thank you so much for shedding some, you know, a light mm-hmm. on this topic. Right. 
Well, You're welcome. And uh, you guys can obviously leave us your responses. We have an email address, get us in it together at gmail.com, where you can send us those long form responses. Or if you want to comment and give us a little short response, we, you can do that on the YouTube channel or on Facebook uh, at Retrospect Pod, where you can find those two pages. Um, but, anyways, until next week, thank you so much for listening. Bye bye. Goodbye, everyone. God bless. Take care. Goodbye. Thank you for hanging out with us today. You're the best. Peace.